Hey everyone, in this video I want to really walk through the relationship between Azure AD and subscriptions because I think there's some confusion. Um, but before I get going, if this is useful, please like, subscribe, comment and share. Uh, it really does help me out. So over the past couple of weeks, I seem to have had the same conversation quite a few times and it's related to concerns about security risks if someone moves a subscription um, to trust their Azure AD tenant or people create new Azure AD instances under their subscription. And some of that, there's some real concerns. Some of that I think it's misunderstanding. So I want to really just walk through what the real relationship is, maybe what some of the considerations are that we, we really do need to think about. So firstly, uh, creating a new Azure AD in a subscription is not a thing. Azure AD does not live in a subscription. If I was using Azure AD B to C, those things are different. They're different instances. They, yes, get created within a subscription. They're for those customer facing apps, a smaller directory. But an Azure AD regular instance, like we use with our Azure resources, like with Office 365, don't live within a subscription. Um, an Azure AD instance really sits above everything else. I create my Azure AD instance and then other things trust it. So for example, I might create subscriptions. Well, that subscription trusts Azure AD, i.e. I'm going to trust the security principles that live in that Azure AD and they could be cloud accounts created directly in Azure AD. They could be replicated from on-premises AD using Azure AD Connect. Um, they could be guest users via B2B from another Azure AD. Um, they could be for a Microsoft account, a Gmail account, a one-time passcode, a SAML, whatever it is. But I'm trusting no security principles for the purposes of role-based access control. I can now apply role-based access control giving the security principles in that Azure AD roles at a certain scope within that subscription. Likewise, I can have cloud applications. Those cloud applications will also trust Azure AD instance. So now I can have permissions, maybe access to this document or this type of functionality for the security principles defined within that Azure Active Directory. But the Azure AD does not live in a subscription. It does not live in an application. So there's a very different relationship there. Now, in terms of can I stop someone creating a new Azure AD? Really, no. There's nothing to stop someone, even if they don't use their corporate account, they can just go and create other Azure AD instances something dot on microsoft.com. Now they can't use your company name because you have to prove ownership of the, the DNS name, the domain name by creating a record. So they wouldn't be able to do that. But I can't stop them creating other Azure AD instances, but it doesn't really mean anything. It's just will be floating out there. There'd be, hey, yeah, there'd be another Azure AD that exists over there now. I, I don't think I really care that much. And to kind of prove that, if I go in and I actually look at, hey, Azure, I want to create a resource. And if I just type here, Active uh, Directory, I can create a new Azure AD. And notice all it asks for is a name, an initial domain name, which will be that something that on Microsoft.com, and a region. There's no hey, what subscription do you want to create this in? What resource group you want to create this in? Um, none of that stuff actually applies because they don't live within a subscription. Now you might say, okay, well, what if someone moves their subscription under my Azure AD? That's kind of a, a concern. So I have a sub and I, I create a new subscription and I move it. Now to move it, I have to have an account in this Azure AD, but it could be a guest, a have been invited, and I move my subscription so it now trusts that Azure AD. What does that mean? Nothing. Now, the role-based access control I defined in that sub is going to be in terms of security principles in that Azure AD. But there's 
there was a no security risk for the Azure AD now. It's not changed anything. All it means is, I mean, and technically, the Azure AD global admin could get permissions into the subscription. They can elevate themselves up. If I go in and look at the properties of my Azure AD, you'll actually see, hey, under properties, I can elevate up to this user access administrator role. You see, I've got it set to yes. That will then give me a special permission on every subscription that trusts that tenant. And it lets me change the permissions. So you'll see, because I've set that box, I have this special user access administrator role at the bottom. So now if I got locked out or something happens, I could go and change the permissions to give myself access to the subscription. So this user access administrator role, the only thing that happens if I trust an Azure AD tenant is, well, technically the people in the Azure AD now can have an impact on me. They can apply a policy to me. Now, there may be a concerns around billing. Oh, well, if they move their subscription under me, now I'm responsible for paying for it. It doesn't work that way. I'm not transferring the billing responsibility. That's not what I'm doing. They're still paying for that. It doesn't move it under my EA. It's simply used for, hey, I can now use those security principles for role-based access control. It's kind of like if I owned a club, I'm never going to own a club. If I owned a club and I got hold of some, hey, 100 celebrity member list or something. Well, I might use that list and say, hey, these people, they're allowed access to my club. But it does nothing to the list. Those people don't have to come to my club. I can't start billing those people. They've, they've agreed to nothing. I can just now use those principles to give permissions to things. That, that's really all it does. There is no API. There, there's really nothing I can do to stop people trusting my Azure AD if they have an account within my Azure Active Directory. But it, again, it's not posing any kind of security risk. Now, you may say, well, if they're under my Azure AD, I want to make sure they're meeting these regulatory requirements. Um, I want to make sure these people have access to it. Well, that's governance. And I can absolutely do that. When I have um, Azure Active Directory, obviously what I want to do is use management groups. So the first management group I create, as soon as I create a management group, it will create a root management group. And then under that, it will create whatever management group I just created. But by virtue of enabling that root management group, any subscription that I now trust to my Azure AD will automatically roll up under that root management group. So we have to see it. I'll see the subscription. Any role-based access control that I apply will apply to the subscription. Hey, these people should have network admin roles. They're going to get them. Any Azure policy I apply will apply now to that subscription. I can apply governance. I can apply core scaffolding to it. So that, that's going to take effect for me. So in terms of, hey, I want to make sure I have this control over it, well, I can absolutely do that through governance, and then I could move it around to different management group structures. Now, there may be a, an opposite to this discussion. My concern may be, hey, um, I'm concerned someone moves a subscription out of my tenant. And that, that might be real. Again, you would still have ownership and billing responsibility, but maybe they're going to go and create a new Azure AD tenant and I don't want them to move the subscription. So I've done this Azure AD2. Now remember, what is required to move a subscription? To move a subscription, me as the person, well, I have to have an account in both the source, which will be obvious. If I have permissions on the subscription, I have to have an account here. But I have to have an account in the target Azure AD as well. I also have to be an owner of the subscription. And that's kind of a key part. Someone used an analogy, and it was about this owner thing. And it's like, well, being an owner of a subscription is like giving someone the keys to your house. I want them to be able to go in and out of my house, but I don't want them then to do other things to my house, go and sell my house, which is really the wrong analogy. If I give someone the keys to my house, that's really like making them a contributor to the subscription. 
they can't change permissions on it. Um, they, they can really do anything within it, but they can't change the permissions of the subscriptions. They can't give other people access, for example. Making someone an owner of a subscription is like putting their name on the deed to your house. So yes, they could then sell it. And so you're gonna be super careful about who you make owners of a subscription. Because yes, if I'm an owner of the sub, I can move it to another tenant. So again, it comes down to governance. Be super careful of who you make owners. Why do they need to be owners? Most of the time we're gonna use DevOps. Um, I can have a service principle that actually goes and creates subscriptions and they have the owner permissions. Maybe humans don't need it. There's a process in place. Humans, well, we only get permissions at kind of resource groups within subscriptions. Oh, I, I could be a contributor at the subscription level. But if it's a concern of people moving things out, don't make them owners of the subscription. There's very few times we need that. There are other ways to have automation and processes to deal with that part. So if that is the concern, people moving out, control who is an owner. If the concern is people create Azure ADs, it doesn't do anything. Anyone can create an Azure AD using really any account. It doesn't do anything. It's not linked to a subscription. If my concern is people link subscriptions to my tenant, again, it doesn't really do anything. By linking a subscription to a tenant, all it means is now their role-based access control is based on ten the security principles in your tenant but it has no security implication for your Azure AD. That user was already a member of your Azure AD or they won't be able to move it, which means they can already query things from the Azure AD in terms of objects. Moving a subscription to trust it doesn't give them any more permission, doesn't change anything. So there really isn't um, any security implication of moving things under. So that kind of cleared it up a little bit, Again, some of this is fact, some of this is my opinion. Um, I'd love in the comments, maybe I'm missing something, a concern people have, so I'd love to kind of hear those and we can kind of talk about it in the comments. But if this was useful, again, please like, um, subscribe, share and comment. And until next time, take care of yourself.